Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. So a very quick no frills video today. I'm going to take a quick look at the Sharp GF8080. A very robust, beautifully made and great sounding unit. And I know they are rather popular. They come up on eBay and various other places now and again. Various price points in various conditions. But um, I've done a restoration on one of these on my channel. So do check that video out. But today is just a quick belt change on this for anyone that wants to do that. So they can just dip into a quick video and see how to change the belt. Just a quick word of advice on this though. A lot of the times with this particular unit, it's the grease that gums up as well. So if it's going into like auto stop mode and various things are happening with it, if the controls are slow to return, it can be because the buttons don't always come back and return properly due to the grease. So that'll be a lubrication issue and stuff like that. So check out my other video for that one. But for today, we're just gonna crack this one open and show you how to change the belt. So the first thing you want to do is remove the screws from the back casing. So we'll remove the battery cover because there is a screw inside there. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five. Then we gently prise the back cover away. There are some connections to the board underneath. I'll show you those in a second. Okay, so there's a white cable, which is your antenna, which is goes to the ant spade on the radio board. And then you've got the DC from the power unit to go to the board and you'll see the black and the red and they are appropriately marked with the positive and negative on the back case. Once you've done that, the back case is ready to come away, complete with the antenna and the transformer and the regulated power supply. That leaves us with the board itself. There are a couple of things to do at this juncture now, including desoldering the two cables from the APSS light and also just unpicking and unscrewing the screws from the board to allow you to access the mech. So we'll get the screws out first. And you've got machine screw here with the washer. There's another one here on the corner. There's a further screw on this corner. And the fourth one is actually holding the cable tie just here. Plus also we'll get the plastic ties away as well. Just to give us access to this fourth screw with the metal cable tie. You can actually remove different screws that take the mech and the board out in one piece which you might see in my other video, but today we're just gonna have access to the underside of the board so we don't need to get the actual mechanism out. So we'll carry on and unpick the cable ties for a moment. And that just gives us better access to the cables and starts to allow us to move everything away. Now you can see that the board itself is fairly happy now. It kind of wants to come loose, but it can't because these two cables here, these white ones, are actually the wires that go to the APSS light. So you may be able to thread them around, but in my experience, it's far easier just to desolder them, move those two out of the way, then we can peel the board back. So here are your two white cables and I always find it useful to put a colour reference on each of those just so that you know which one goes where. There is a third white lead here as well which you don't normally need to desolder and there may be a capacitor to unsolder as well on the bottom side but we'll come to that in a minute if we need to. It can be quite prudent to take photographs of the board at this stage as well just to make sure you know where the cables go back or you could make a little colour-coded diagram like that. Just 
to give yourself a ready reckoner really as to where things go should you need to. Next then to desolder the cables. You have to be a bit careful with this model because there are lots of cables all in a very close proximity. So just make sure you don't burn through any of the others. So we're nearly ready to remove the board now. There's just one capacitor to desolder. So with just the two white cables for the APSS light, plus that capacitor desoldered, we can then gently lift and pull back on the board to clear the switches from the top plate. And then we can gently peel it back, giving us access to all of the switches if we want to clean those. But more importantly, just for today, we've now also got access to the belt. So now is a good time to make a note of the belt path if you need to. This one obviously is still intact and it's fairly obvious to see where it goes. But you can see actually that the pulleys and the idlers are sort of slipping. There's some bite in there, but it's it's on its way out and there's a bit too much slack and dryness in the belt. So we're going to replace it. We can actually cheat a bit sometimes. And I'm just going to put a drop of acetone onto the, uh, the thrust screw here, just to soften the lacquer that's holding it in place, because you can actually generally slip the belt underneath this without having to take the actual keeper mechanism away. So now the acetone's had a little bit of time to soak. We can loosen, if not actually remove the grub screw. And that will give us access to slip the belt completely out without having to take out the whole mech and do it the other way. So there we go. In fact, you can really see how deformed this is now, where it's been around the pulleys. Uh, one of these will be from the motor spindle. The other one will be from the idler there. So, yeah, you can see it obviously needed a new belt. It was barely hanging on and you'd have got some wow and flutter issues with that as well. And although the belt had not deteriorated, now's a nice time to put a drop of oil on the motor spindle if you want to, or to at least run some alcohol along the pulleys, just to give them a bit of a bit of a clean. You can see there is some dirt coming off. It's always worth doing that just to make sure the belt can have as better bite as possible. And just remember to let the alcohol flash off before you put the new belt on. And whilst it's outside the scope of this video, I did notice that the idler rubber is a little bit dry looking. So I'm just going to put some rubber renew on that to try and freshen it up a bit. It's not cracked or broken. And I know when I did a dry test on this before I embarked on the video that the idler does work, but it's very fiddly to change the idler tires on this. And to be honest with you, they're very difficult to find new anymore. You have to kind of use O-rings or something similar to try and make it work. And the plastic starts to age and become brittle. So, you're more likely to do more damage than help on some of these old units if you delve too deep. Sometimes it's better to do just what you need to do to get it to work. And that way, gentle maintenance every now and again can actually be better than ripping the whole thing apart. Just depends on the circumstances, but there we go. That's a bit better. Right, good stuff. We're ready to try the new belt. And so we take the new belt and we can thread that underneath. Like so. And we'll just let that get settled. Get the twists out of it. 
Lovely. Then we can refit the grub screw. Not all the way down. You want a fraction of a mil of free play in that. And when you're happy with the feel of that, you put a drop of paint or nail polish just to lock that back in. And then reversal will be the opposite. So we'll fold this back over. Don't forget to re-solder your capacitor back on. Pop your two white wires back onto the board. Fix your four screws in. And then put the back cover on. Jobs are good and. And as I say, I've covered it in the other video, but if you want to at this juncture, you can actually go in there and clean the leaf contact switch. You can also clean the erase, the erase switch on the board whilst you can get to it, etc., etc. But for now, anyways, it's time to put it all back together again. So to that end, you basically have to keep the white cables out of the way, feed the switches through the holes on the face plate and just make sure that the array switch is sitting in the right place as well. There we go, and that's nested in properly. So we have the four screws to go back in. Not forgetting that the fourth one also holds the cable tie. So now everything's screwed down properly, we then just solder back on a few things. One of which is the capacitor that we undid earlier. Also, we've got the two cables for the APSS lights. So we'll just drop a little bit of flux on those and we'll get those back on. Now might be the time to actually try it out. I think everything is locked in, screwed down where it needs to be. So we can demo it now. And if everything's okay, we can go ahead and do all the cable ties, get the back case on, give it a good clean, and that'll be that. And in terms of power for this, I've just got a regulated power supply. And I've got nine volts going in. And she's topping out around 450 milliamps. I think it draws around 400 milliamps when it's... Uh, when it's operating the tape so that should be enough right anyways let's just see if the radio or anything comes to life first there we go so there's that okay so tape and eject and we'll just find a tape to put in they should work as i say everything's driven by one belt so I press play now and it should work. I'm not with you. Okay, so it's playing and I think it might have come to the end. So I'll turn it over like so and play. APSS, lift the light up here. That's working. There we go. Let's find the next track. Good.
So here it is then, the Sharp GF8080. Just a quick video today to show how to change the main drive belt. If you want to see more information on removing the mech, changing the counter belt and various other service items on this particular model, please do check out my fuller video available on the channel as well. So today, as I say, just a quick one on the belts, but I have given it a decent deep clean as well and checked it all over, screwed it all back together nice and snug so she's good to go. Right, let's just try it out then. Press play. <laughs> And we'll rewind it. We'll fast forward it first. And you can see the counter going. And stop, rewind. And again, nice and quiet, running beautifully. So there she is. Marvellous. And we'll just try the APSS as well. So there we go. And what we've got there is the lights going on. And it's found the start of the next song. And we're away. Brilliant. Yep, so really happy with that. That's a, a little job well done today. Not the easiest job in the world, but not the hardest either. I'd say this is probably an intermediate one. It's not one where you can just take the back cover off and there's the belt, like on a, a JVC RC250 LB or something like that. But conversely, it's not one that you've got to actually strip the actual mechanism apart too much, like on a an RCM90 or something like that. So I'd say it's somewhere in the middle. I think we've got about half a dozen screws on the back case, then I think four screws and some cable ties and stuff, and three wires to desolder, or two wires and a capacitor to desolder to get the board away. Then we've got access to the mech. So I guess it's kind of like a, a medium job for that, but it's perfectly doable if you're methodical and careful. And also take lots of photos as you go, and just keep an eye on what you're doing and it's not the massive massive job so uh, anyway listen i hope you've enjoyed that i hope you found it interesting and indeed useful if you need to do this on your own so thanks very much for watching please do consider subscribing hit the notification bell for updates we've got loads of stuff coming up with boom boxes personal stereos games eight track stuff all that kind of thing as always thank you ever so much for watching i really appreciate all your support and stay safe i'll see you soon Bye bye <laughs>